the first question I kind of was interested in asking is what you think each has contributed to the computer and technology industry, starting with you, Steve, for Bill, and vice versa. Um, well, you know, Bill built the first software company in the industry. And uh, I think he built the first software company before anybody really in our industry knew what a software company was, except for these guys. And that was huge. That was really huge. And the business model that they ended up pursuing turned out to be the one that worked really well, you know, for the industry. Mm -hmm. So I think, but the, the, the biggest thing was Bill was really focused on software before almost anybody else had a clue that, that it was really the software. Was that's, that's what I see. I mean, I, a lot of other things you could say, but that's the high order bit. And I think building a company is really hard. And, and it requires... It requires your greatest persuasive abilities to hire the best people you can and keep them, keep them, keep them at your company and keep them working, you know, doing the best work of their lives, hopefully. And uh, Bill's been able to stay with it for all these years. So, Bill, how about the contribution of Steve and Apple? Well, first I want to clarify, I'm not fake Steve Jobs. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You know, what Steve's done is quite phenomenal. You know, if you look back to 1977, that Apple II computer, the idea that it would be a mass market machine, uh, you know, the bet that was made there by Apple uniquely, there were other people with products, but the idea that this could be an incredible empowering phenomena, Apple pursued that dream. Uh, you know, then uh, one of the most fun things we did was the Macintosh, and that was so risky. And you know, people may not remember that Apple really bet the company. Mm -hmm. Lisa hadn't done that well, and uh, you know some people were saying, "Okay, that general approach wasn't good." But the team that Steve built, even within the company, to pursue that, uh, even some days it felt a little ahead of its time. Uh, I don't remember that Twiggy disk drive. 128k. Yeah, uh, and. Ah, uh, the Twiggy disk drive. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> Steve gave a speech once, which is one of my favorites, where he talked about, in, in a certain sense, we build the products that we want to use ourselves. Uh, and you know, so he's really pursued that with incredible taste and elegance that has had a, a huge impact on the industry. Uh, and his ability to always come around and figure out where that next bet should be uh, has been phenomenal. You know, Apple literally was failing when Steve went back and. Uh, reinfused the uh, innovation and risk taking that have uh, been phenomenal. So the industry's benefited immensely uh, from his his work. We've both been lucky to be part of it, but uh, you know, I'd say he's contributed as much as anyone. Um, well, we've also we've yeah, also ahead. both been incredibly lucky to have had great partners that we started the companies with, and we've attracted great people. I mean, so. Uh, Everything that's been done at Microsoft and at Apple has been done by just remarkable people, uh, none of which are sitting up here, you know, today. Well, not us. Well, you're sort of the... Not, you. <laughs> not, not, not us. <laughs> and you're sort of... You're, so, you're, in a way, you're the stand-ins for all those, all yeah, those other people. in a way, we are. Um, in a very tangible way. So, Bill mentioned the Apple II in, in 1977 and <clears throat> 30 years ago, and there were a couple of other computers with... Uh, which were uh, aimed at the idea that average people might be able to use them. And looking back on it, a really average, average person might not have been able to use them uh, by today's standards, but it certainly broadened the base of who could use computers. I actually looked at, a, uh, at an Apple ad from 1978. It was a print ad that shows you how ancient it was. And, uh, and it said, thousands of people have discovered the Apple computer. Thousands of people. <laughs> Uh, and it also said, you don't want to buy one of these computers where you put a cartridge in. I think that was a, a reference to one of the Atari or something. I don't know. You want a computer you can write your own programs on. And so the world, and obviously people we had some, still We do, had some but, very strange ads back then. We had one where it was in a kitchen, and there was a, 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 a woman that looked like the wife, 
and she was typing in recipes on the computer with the husband looking on approvingly in the back. <laughs> most people, uh, I, some people here, but I don't think most people know that there was actually a, a, some Microsoft software in that Apple II computer. Do you want to talk about what happened there, how that, how that occurred? Yeah, the, uh, the, there had been the Altair and a few other companies, actually about 24, that had done various machines. But the 77 group included the PET, uh, TRS-80 Commodore. and the Com yeah, Commodore yeah. PET, uh, TRS-80, and the Apple II. The original Apple II basic, the integer basic, uh, we had nothing to do with. But then there was a floating point one uh, where, uh, and I mostly worked with Waz on that. Uh, I made, I well, mean, let I, me tell this story. <laughs> so Waz, <laughs> Waz, my partner, we started out with this guy named Steve Wozniak, brilliant, brilliant guy. He writes this basic that is like the best basic on the planet. It does stuff that no other basic's ever done. You don't have to run it to find your error messages. It finds them when you type it in and stuff. It's perfect in every way, except for one thing, which is it's, it's just fixed point, right? It's not, it's not floating point. And so we're getting a lot of input that people want this basic to be floating point. And like we're begging Waz, please, please make this floating point. Who's we? How many people are in Apple? Well, me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're begging Waz to make this floating point. And he, he just never does it, you know, and he wrote it by hand on paper. I mean, you know, he didn't, we did, he didn't have an assembler or anything to write it with. It was all just written on paper and he'd type it in. He just never got around to making a Why? floating point. Why? Well, this is one of the mysteries of life. I don't know. <laughs> but he never did. And so, you know, Microsoft had this very popular, really good floating point basic that we ended up going to them and saying, help. And, and, and how much was the, I think you were telling us earlier? Oh, it was $31,000. That Apple uh, paid you for For that. the floating point basic. And I flew out to Apple. I spent two days there getting the cassette. The cassette tapes were the main ways that people stored things at the time. <laughs> right. Uh, and, you know, that was fun. I think the most fun uh, is, is later uh, when we worked together.